Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson three of the platform specific series of my Armour Slambi program tutorials. This time we're going to be looking at the Game Boy Advance again. We looked at the 16 bit per pixel mode last time. We're going to look at 256 color mode this time, which means just one byte per pixel. Now, unfortunately, on the Game Boy Advance, we have to write to the screen in pairs of bytes, in half words as they're called on the arm. So, this is going to make things a little bit difficult. And for that reason, I would actually recommend for the beginner the 16 bit per pixel mode is going to be easier. But the 256 color mode is going to be um, used much less memory for your sprite and things and it's going to be faster so if you're looking for speed then this is probably going to be the one you want let's have a look at the source code for today so here it is we've got this multi-platform code and if I just compile it here you can see we've got our character and our bitmap graphics here um, you can of course export the data for today's example using my Acris Bright editor as always here it is um, this is today's example and if you go to arm and you select Game Boy Advance, you can export for the 256 color mode for today's example or the 32768 8 color mode for the last example. So you've got both options there. Now we do have to write in what's known as half words, 16 bit values on this system. You can see that here. Um, the reason for this is the way the screen works. If we write in bytes, we're going to have some problems. If I just change this here to bytes and then I change this just to increase the width here and I compile again. Well, you can see now we've still got the same graphic and you can still see it's the same width, but you'll notice the resolution has become quite blocky. You see, whenever we write one byte to a 16-bit value within the screen memory, it actually sets the other value at the same time. Um, I'm sure there's a good reason for that. Uh, it'd be quite handy if we were trying to do very fast low resolution graphics, but um, certainly not what we want here. So um, that's some, something you do have to know about this screen. We've just got to make sure we do use it in the right way. So that's one limitation of this, and that's why I would sort of recommend using the 16 bit per pixel mode if you're a beginner, just to make things a little bit easier for you, plotting individual pixels on the screen. Because uh, if you're trying to write individual pixels, you're going to have to actually read and write pairs of bytes to, to work with this screen mode. But yeah, I do see the value of 256 colors. Um, with these retro systems, I'm used to only having 16 colors, so it's far more than I'm used to. So um, we're going to have a look at this screen mode today, and we're going to learn how to get it working. OK, so the first thing we need to do is turn on the screen. Now, we've got a screen init routine here. Um, again, we need the LCD control here. And that's at port four and six zeros in hexadecimal here. And then what we need to do is we need to turn the layer on, layer two, we, with the, this four here. And then we need to select the screen mode. And this is actually screen mode four. Now this will set the screen memory just like before, starting at memory address six and then six zeros here. And that will be the screen. And then what we need to do this time is write a pair of color entries. So we're selecting color zero here and color zero here. So this is two color zeros from our palette. That's what we've got this time. We've got a palette defining our colors. So we're going to fill that in. And this time there are two pixels per 16 bit value. That's his word. It's, I apologize. It's because I'm used to 16 bit machines. So this is half word. That's it's more accurate there. Apologize for that. So here we're storing a half word each time. And so we're filling the screen basically just like before with color zero. If we change this to ones, then we would be filling with color one. We're not going to do that. We're going to use color zero. So we've filled with color zero here. But of course, what does color zero actually mean? Well, we need to define that. And we do that with memory address five and six zeros. That's the address of the palette. And the palette is in the same format basically as the 16 bit screen was five bit per channel, blue, green, red here. So you can see we're defining our colors here. Now we're initially only defining very few here, but we've got the proper palette that the graphic needs being defined here. And we're transferring that with this routine here. But that's just basically a copy of the code we're seeing here. But what we're doing here is we're loading in each palette entry. We're going to read it in and store it to that memory address. Of course, there's two bytes per palette entry, as you can see here. And this is the native format of the hardware. And that's what we're using during the initialization. Now, when it comes to our multi-platform example, I use a different format. I use one nibble per channel in green, red, blue format here. This is what I use in all of my tutorials all the way back from the eight bits. So I'm still using it here, even though the Game Boy Advance actually uses five bits per channel. So it's actually better than my example code. But what we're doing here is we are going to convert that by bit shifting and by masking out certain bits here. And we're converting from my one nibble per channel to the five bits per channel that the 
Game Boy Advance is capable of. So you can see here it's very straightforward to define the palette. Yeah, we're not defining a full 256 here, obviously, but we can, and there, there is plenty of memory to do that. So we're using this address to define our palette. Now, of course, the, this memory address, 5 million here, um, this is the palette. 6 million here is the screen memory, and we need to use that when we're calculating screen addresses. Now, when we want to draw to the screen, we're using get screen pos here. Now, the formula for this is pretty straightforward. What it does is it takes an X and Y position and it calculates the memory address of that screen memory so that we can later plot pixels to it. And of course, we're using that just here. So we use get screen pos to calculate the starting address and then get next line to move down one line once we've drawn a full line to the screen. So when we want to calculate the screen address, all we're doing is using get screen pos, and this takes the x position and the y position in R1 and R2. It takes the y pos, multiplies it by 240, and adds the x position, adding that to the screen base at 6 million here in hexadecimal. And we're using the multiply command here to multiply the y position by 240. And then we're just adding the x position here, and that has calculated the address of the screen where we want to draw our image to. When we've completed a line, because each line is 240 pixels wide and 240 bytes wide, we just add 240 to move down a line. And that's really all there is to it. Now, these functions are used in the print char routine. The print char uses a single bit per pixel font, which is a bit of a pain, but that's what I've come to use in all my tutorials. We're not going to go into that today. It's a, a more complex extension of the same basic idea. So hopefully you, this simpler example is going to be better to get you started. And that's really all there is to it. I mean, I'd say it's very easy once you've got this sort of example, if you want to just reposition the graphic, you can just change the X, Y coordinates and you can see now it's at 50, 50 and it's getting overwritten by all the Hello World text. But as I say, the, the concept is we've, we've got this nice simple example for drawing things to the screen and that's what we wanted to get at the end of today's example. So there you go. I hope you found this interesting. This was the um, second Game Boy Advance one. We're going to be looking at the NDS next on the Nintendo DS. And Nintendo DS is actually quite similar to the Game Boy Advance. It borrowed some of the hardware and upgraded it. So um, it's going to be kind of similar in some ways. It's quite different in others, of course, but um, it's going to be quite fun. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, you know, please like and subscribe. If you um, like the videos, then it recommends them to other people. Google, YouTube recommends based on how many likes they get and things like that. So it will help me out. And if you subscribe, it just generally improves my motivation to make more videos because it takes a lot of time to make videos. So please consider doing that. Anyway, um, I hope this has been some help to you. You can get the source code, you can get the build script and the pre-configured emulator and things from my website. And you can also get Aku Sprite Editor, the Sprite Editor I wrote, which is also open source. So you can make mess around with that if you um, want to make it better. But um, whatever you do, I wish you all the best with your programming and I hope you have a lot of luck with it. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.